You're watching a Pantry.com tutorial by CBiz Payroll, and in this video we're going to show you how to add a new employee to Pantry. A quick side note, if you are using our EMS software, this video is not intended for you as you will be managing your employee information in the EMS software. Alright, let's get started. When a new employee needs to be added to Pantry, you'll start by going to the Employee Information section on the main menu. This is where you're able to add new employees to the system as well as edit information on current employees. What we're looking at now is a list of the current employees on this company. To add an employee to this list, you need to click the New Employee link at the top right side of the menu. This takes us to the New Employee Wizard, which is a tool that Pantry uses to collect the basic information needed to create a new employee. As you can see at first glance, the New Employee Wizard does not contain an exhaustive list of all employee fields, it's just the basics. Some items, such as a direct deposit account or recurring deductions, will need to be entered on the specific setup tabs in the Employee Information section after the initial employee setup is complete. The Employee Information tabs will be covered in detail in a separate tutorial. Another thing you'll notice is that the new Employee Wizard has information organized into several sections, so let's take a closer look at the first few sections. To start off, Pantry will suggest your next employee ID based on your current list of employee IDs. So if your current employee IDs are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, Pantry will suggest 6 as your next ID, but this can be easily overridden if you'd like to use something else. Just keep in mind that employee IDs must be fewer than 6 digits. Pantry also requires the employee's name and social security number as a minimum to add a new employee, but some of the other fields may be left blank if you don't have the information immediately on hand. However, be cautious when leaving the address, hire date, and birth date fields blank as this information is required for new hire reporting and various other tax reporting such as the W-2. CBiz does not advise processing any paychecks on the employee until these fields have been populated. Moving down to the Department and Status section, if you have Organizational Cost Center set up, those will be available to select here, along with a few other basic employee fields. And in the Rate section, you will select whether your employee is hourly or salaried, and then enter the hourly rate or the salary amount the employee receives each pay period. If the employee is commissioned or does not have a standard pay rate, you can leave the rate set to none. Now let's take a look at the last few sections, which are all tax related. The tax summary section is where you'll indicate whether the employee will be receiving a W-2 or a 1099 at the end of the year. And you will also select the states where the employee will be taxed. The state tax field is where you select the employee's personal withholding tax state and the SUI tax field is where you select the state where the employer will be paying unemployment taxes on behalf of this employee. The work state field is only used for reporting purposes and can be generally ignored at this stage. If the employee works in a state with local taxes, such as Ohio or Pennsylvania, those options will be available in the local tax drop-down lists. If you don't see the state or local tax you need in your drop-down lists, please contact your CBIS service team to have those tax codes added to your company. The following two sections, Federal Tax Details and State Tax Details, are where you will enter the employee's tax filing status based on the employee's W-4 and whatever W-4 state equivalent form is used in the employee's tax state. One thing to notice is that the state tax details change based on what you have selected as the employee's state tax in the section above. Once you've finished entering all of the necessary information, your last step is to click the Add Employee button at the bottom of the screen. If by chance you have forgotten to populate a required field, Pantry will highlight the field and allow you to go back and enter the missing information before adding the employee. If everything was right the first time, your new employee will now show up in your list of current employees, and you'll be able to click on that employee to add additional information as needed, or change the existing information if you mistakenly entered something incorrectly in the new employee wizard. The employee ID is the only piece of information that cannot be edited after the initial setup. Thanks so much for watching our tutorial. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact your CBiz service team. Or, if you're interested in starting payroll service with CBiz, please contact us at the phone number or email on the screen. Thanks, and have a great day.